Hi, my name is Katie Frazier. Um, I'm making this video to share with you some information that I've come across recently. Um, I know I've made videos in the past posting things on social media about my dad, Rick Frazier, and this is a video again about that. Um, I'm making this video again because I feel like nothing is really being done. Um, although last time when I posted on social media, I did get a lot of responses and people who were willing to help. So I'm hoping that this will, you know, help again. Um, recently, you know, a couple of years ago, I moved out of my dad's house and um, after I found that he was doing a lot of wicked things and just how he had hurt me, I didn't want to be around him any longer. Just a couple of things to summarize um, that I've talked about previously is when I was younger, my dad um, sexually abused my sisters and I. I am the youngest, the oldest of four children. Um, there's me, my sister Hannah, my sister Chloe, and then my brother Ricky. And um, my parents got divorced, and once the divorce started, my sisters and I kind of came forward and told my mom that when we were younger, our dad would come into our bed when we were sleeping and would just inappropriately rub us and touch us. And so this was immediately brought forward to Child Protective Services. However, nothing had been done. And later in my life, when I found records, uh, like the Child Protective Service records, I had found the statements that I'd made to Child Protective Services, and I found that I had actually even um, been to Child Protective Services multiple times throughout the years because um, teachers had been concerned that I was being abused by my dad, um, other family members, and each time, I mean, I saw the statements I made, they were concerning to me even just like, I didn't even remember that as a child and looking back and to see that nothing had been done. And so then I started to realize that a lot of the people that my dad is connected with are involved in law enforcement or are politicians. And I just realized that it seemed like the system was kind of rigged. And this continued to happen. I mean, throughout my parents' divorce, I saw the judge treat my mom terribly. I mean, she threw my mom in jail for paying her tithes. And I know this judge has also done other things where she threw another mom in jail for not vaccinating her child, even though it was her religious right. So just a lot of things that, you know, my dad has gone before judges and had lawyers and had law enforcement support him that really... The evidence was not on his side, but yet they still supported him. So that concerned me because also then I'd found records of, you know, for example, my the kids were given to my dad for full custody. And that was really confusing because I knew that when I told them that how my dad had molested me, my sisters had told them as well. But also there was other records that my dad had um, sexually abused other men and even younger boys at, um, you know, a camp that he used to volunteer at, at Detroit, a Christian camp. He was kicked out of that for molesting younger boys. There's records of this. There's records of him um, soliciting men for sex, offering them money if they would have sex with him. And these were men that worked for him. So it was, you know, they brought cases against him, but yet, you know, he gave them a lot of money. So they stopped talking about it. But everything was just being swept under the rug. And I'm looking, you know, how are people still supporting my dad? How is he getting away with this for so long? And to the point where more and more people are being hurt. You know, not only my family, but then I found record of how he misuses monies from the charities that he gets. I mean, my whole life I lived a very, you know, very had a lot of money. Um, never had to worry about we were going to eat or I could always get new clothes. And we lived in a big house. I knew that my dad had money, but I never really understood how he got it because he just told me, you know, he did charity work. And so I'm thinking, you know, if you do charity work, how do you have all this money? And I started to find and even I found like news articles that said that my dad took about 80, on average, like 83% of the money that came into the charity, he took for himself in, you know, running the charity. Whereas the rest of like the little 15, less than 20% went to actually people in need or the charities that said it was gonna help. So that was all very concerning, but no one really seemed to be doing anything about it. And, um, and then also recently what had happened is my dad started talking evil about this one pastor saying that, well, pastor, his name is Apostle Taylor, saying that he steals money and he was upset because my mom had actually given part of her divorce settlement. She gave a large offering to the church. You know, it's her right, but somehow that made my dad very upset, I think, because he felt it was kind of still his money. But um, since then, my dad has been actively against Apostle Taylor and even um, posted these terrible videos about him online because my dad brought him in for like... Um, he was part of the deposition in my parents' divorce hearing. But so I went home recently, and this is why you know I'm making this video again, because things are still wicked. My dad is still wicked, still doing so many evil things, and he is not at all repenting or showing any remorse or regret for the things that he's done or the people he's hurt. 
Uh, just last month, I went home to see my dad because, you know, I left him. I didn't want anything to do with him. But I recently went home to see my dad because I wanted to see, you know, maybe given the benefit of the doubt, maybe I had misjudged him. Maybe the things that he was doing, there was a reason for. I didn't know the full story. You know, I, he's my dad. I wanted to somehow kind of be wrong so that he wasn't this terrible guy. I didn't want my dad to be a terrible person. But I went home and I found the complete opposite. Not only was he continuing to steal money from charities, I mean, even just when I got home, the very first few days that I got home, he gave me a credit card with the, that was tied into the business account. So clearly when I was there, you know, the charges I was making for food or whatever were not for the business, were not for the charity, but it was being purchased with charity money. So that right off the bat, I'm like, you know, why or is all the money you're spending from the charity? Then I also just found, um, you know, even with the church, what he's doing against that was so wicked. I found that even just in one month that he had paid $96,000. This was in June of 2018. He had paid $96,000 to spread negative lies about this church, about Apostle Taylor, about the church event that was coming up to discourage people from attending. And I'm just looking like, how are you? You know, you profess to be a Christian, although I know you're a closet homosexual because even just the men you hang out with, um, you know, he's always with this one guy named Paris and they're always out, you know, God, doing God knows what. And my mom has caught them in bed before, but yeah, my dad still denies he's homosexual. But so, you know, the church supports him, my dad, because he gives a lot of money, you know, his ties I'm sure are huge. But I'm looking, you know, how do you profess to be a Christian yet you're spreading negative media telling people not to go to this church? And that was what really, disappointed me and even just while I was there I got I saw so many records of bank statements and everything that just really showed how he was misusing um, charity finances so I went back home he still never even apologized for what he had done to my sisters and I um, he would deny it and to my face he would deny that he even molested my sisters and I or that he even abused all these other men that there's record of him doing so so you know I left my dad's house again I wasn't there for long I just really wanted to give him a chance, but I'm making this video again to show that he's still wicked. He is continuing to steal money, continuing to abuse his power, and even he's abusing his brother's power. His brother is in law enforcement. He's a deputy police chief, and he's had his brother helping him, um, you know, to even just to go come against the church. He tried to start a protest to stop people from attending the church. And his brother's been helping him with that. So I'm coming to social media because the law enforcement is wicked. The politicians are wicked. And someone's got to say something so this will stop.